Hello out there in television land and welcome. It's the December version of Stump the Chumps. Our topic this evening, Williston. I, I'll, I'll be frank with you folks, I know nada. That is nothing about Williston, but I'm no fool because right with me today are two esteemed gentlemen that know everything you wanted to ever know and more about the town of Williston. On my immediate left, Herb Goodrich. He knows it all, and what he doesn't know, the man on his immediate left will tell us. Howard Lunderville, Mr. Williston, and between the two of them, you'll be hard pressed to stump us on Williston questions. And we've got some doozers for you. And we've taped a little bit as an introduction yesterday. First of all, Al Wheel is taking this evening off, but he did the filming with me yesterday, and he will be back in future programs. We've got swell prizes for you folks, and we plan to uh, ask a lot of interesting questions. Eat your heart out, Channel 33. ETV gets all that foundation money to do a slick show. This is a real Williston show, folks. <laughs> we'll tell you what Williston's all about when we come back. We'll have a short introductory tape. And we invite you to call us here at 862-3966 and buy for some swell prizes like this Vermont teddy bear. This little fella's going to go to the one that you fellas judge with me to be the best caller that we receive this evening. So after the tape, we'll be back and we welcome your calls to our program. Stand by and listen to the interesting questions that we throw out at you at this tape and then give us a ring right when we come back. And I think you'll enjoy the little historic view through Williston with us as we did this scene yesterday morning. Welcome out there, viewers of Stump the Chumps. Here it is, December, and we are in the town of Williston, and I couldn't have picked more uh, esteemed gentlemen that are present with me today in the meeting rooms of the town, city, uh, the town hall. On my left, Howard Lunderville, need I say more, and on my right, Herb Goodrich. You're going to need an awful lot of thinking to stump these two fellas, and they've got some great questions. The reason we're inside is be frank with you, it's cold out there. And my cameraman, Al Angler, says, we'll do the filming inside and then go outside and surround the questions that we're going to ask here with some visuals. So the first question involves a bridge here. And how can we frame this, Howard? If they're going to see it, how can we frame the question here? Uh, where is the bridge on the east side of uh, Williston that goes nowhere? Yeah, and who had the uh, great foresight to build that thing? Great construction job. All right, thanks, Howard. Yeah. Now, our next uh, question, and uh, Herb, I'm going to join you, and you're going to uh, ask us about uh, some other site here. And this is what kind of question can we ask the folks about this site? Uh, right on the corner of Oak Hill Road and Route 2, there was a building. Can anybody tell us what that building is and who run it? Right, it's a public building, folks. Who ran that? We're looking at the army now. Can you tell us what was there before the army was built? There are two public buildings around that site, right? Right. Okay. Herb, you got a question about this site here. Yeah, it's a grocery store which is now owned by Tom and Kim. Can anyone tell us who the four or five original owners or it has been at that store. Boy, that'll get them guessing. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Yes, sir. Town of Williston, Citizen of the Year again, because Howard Lunderville has informed me the town has been saved a lot of money over the years, not having to pay for a lot of street uh, uh, removal, of, you know, and stuff like that. It's all been taken care of for you, Howard. And what's the question involving that? Uh, the question is, who was the first one that did it, and who is the one, that is the gentleman that is doing it now? And also not on the payroll, saving you a great deal of money, right? That's, that's right. All right. And you have a couple other questions that you can ask the viewers. Yes, we, uh, I'd like to know what was at Pine Ridge School before Pine Ridge School was there. Okay. And another one, what was at the town landfill before the landfill was there? Beautiful. <laughs> Dazzle them. Start them off with a beauty that they're still thinking about. And don't forget to call in, folks, 862. 3966 is a number. 
Okay, what was uh, located originally where Friendly's is at Top Corners? Beautiful question. Only one particular, again, a public building, what was there? You okay. know, private business? Uh, no, I'll give it away if I try oh, to get any other right. answer. All right. <laughs> what was where Friendly's is now, folks? Number two. There were two creameries in town. Where are they? Where were they located? And who owned them? And who owned them? All right. And the third one I have is uh, there was an open air theater. And wait a minute. The roof blew off, or what are you talking about? No, it was just uh, things were just went on during the summertime movies. At night, with outdoor lights surrounding the situation. Right. And what where was it located? I'll be darned. Now, there was also a couple of, were there tanneries in town at all? Any other businesses, greeneries? Uh, there was, uh, uh, there was a grain mill and also a uh, big grocery store in the northern part of town. Northern part of town, the grocery store. We want to know who owned that one. Beautiful. And we're also going to even discuss murders on this program. We want to know Ooh. some mystery here in town. I guess we had a couple of those, too. <laughs> well, we want to know who are they involved, and uh, we can talk the big fires here in town. And anything else that our viewers want to discuss, we're available to them. In addition, give us a ring. <laughs> You know, we have a call right away. We don't like to keep the callers waiting around here. Hello, you're on the air. Hello, you're on the air. Hello? I... I'm here, and what was the situation that uh, happened in the Williston Post Office that was reported in the Boston Papers? Sir, I, you're going to have to think harder than that because I know Herb knows already, and I'm sure Howard does. Hold on, sir. We'll tell you. How about that molass and feathers of the town uh, postmistress? No. You tired and feathered her? No, <laughs> molasses and feathered her. <laughs> no, what was, sir, are, is that true? They really did that? Yeah. Why? Howard, why did they do that for? Because <laughs> <laughs> somebody was supposed to be going to somebody else and couldn't been going to somebody else. <laughs> Women trouble, I guess. <laughs> right, and I was the one that had to do the arresting of the... <laughs> you, you got him on a 604. Right. Way to go. <laughs> Sir, you got one more question. Go ahead. What was the name of the brothers that established the first refrigeration system Ooh. in the United States? In the United States? And they were, in, they were from Williston? Established in Williston. I think it was the Wright Brothers. We're going to go with the Wright Brothers. That's right. You've got to be right with right. <laughs> You're not going to be wrong with right. We did it again. <laughs> Sir, thank you very much with your questions. They're terrific ones. And my friend, you also get a hat for that. How's that? Well, he enjoyed it, I think. We got another call or not? OK, we're going to go line two. Hello, you're on the air. Yes, the, uh, it used to be the Twista Hill Lodge. That's correct. You're yeah, absolutely right. 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 Now, have you got one to stump these fellas with? No. You don't? They're too smart for me. Oh, come on. <laughs> I tell you, they could be had, and I'll, I'll start you off. I'll help you, okay? We got Howard Lunderville here, who made national headlines when uh, President Bush came to town and the dog and the fire station and all that stuff. Now, would you uh, be of the opinion that was the only time a luminary such as a president came to Williston? Or was there another president that may have visited the town of Williston? Thomas Kidman did. Ooh, well, he was a governor of the state, that's for sure. <laughs> but I'm talking about in the uh, mid-1800s, a president visited Williston. Were you aware of that, Howard? No, but... No, I'm serious. A pres another president came to the I town of Williston. Probably, it could have been uh, Taft. Well, it wasn't Taft that I'm aware of. That could have happened. I'm talking way back now. I said the mid 1800s. I'm talking probably uh, early 1800s. Right? Way Lewis. back. Wasn't Harold? Uh, wasn't no. uh, was name? Also, a general came to Williston. This is going back. Uh, I'm talking now in the well. 1817 was when the president came. So you can figure that out. Caller, would you know who was president in 1817? Well, I guess he may have hung up. 
Okay, we're going to go to line one. Hello, you're on the air. Yes, question for either one of the gentlemen. Uh, at the corner of Route 2 and Crisper Road, what was the house that was there? That's the first question. Come on, fellas. Uh, that was uh, Frank Alling's place. Frank Alling had that place. Okay, and uh, I assume you know that the library was named after Dorothy, right? Right, correct. Okay. That was a historical place, am I right? All right. Okay, thank you. No, no, hold on, sir. I, I have one. Um, there's Alling Industries, right? Wasn't that out there? Right. I'd like to ask the caller, what specific product was Alling Industries most uh, famous for producing? Up points, four-runner shovel industries. No, no, I'm not. No. 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 What did it? Yes. Hooks. Uh, that's, well, no, come on now, Herb. we got to give up. Oh, is it Herb? <laughs> I thought you may have heard him. He's he's halfway there. It was a specific type of uh, finished product. Yeah, yeah. There's hooks they used to put on cars of some sort. Uh, not on cars. Well, but cup hooks? There are yeah. cup hooks. You're absolutely <laughs> right. Oh, hey, hey, yeah. For that, you, my friend, you get a bottle of banal. <laughs> you, you get a fishing lure. And uh, how about another hat? How's that? Sounds good. Make you look good in Williston, I'll tell you that. Thank you. Thanks a lot, gentlemen. Thanks for calling. All right. See, the yeah. phone calls are coming in. We got another one? I don't know. Hi, you're on the air. Whoop. He, he missed me. You go, I missed you. Yeah, you got it that time. Go ahead. What was across uh, from the driving range in, right there in Williston? What was that place that was across there? And uh, I got another part of that question, too. That was a farm there at one time. Okay, that, who owned it? Johnson. Okay, in 19, in the 30, 1930s, who was the people that ran the farm? Uh, well, we know. We'll it, just we'll just settle in on the time frame here, fellas. The 1930s. Who was running the farm for the Johnsons? Before the Johnsons. No, for them. For them, for them. all right. Well, we'll think of that. Howard's thinking. He's... I didn't think about that. I think of his name. Well, have you, have you got him in mind, Howard? I don't mind that. <laughs> like well, back in the you got him. You got him, my friend. I did. Yeah. Wow. Who is it? You want me to tell him? Yes, yeah. sir. Email and Emma Compagna. Right. <laughs> You're right, my friend. I did. How about the second half of it? Anything else? Uh, that was it. That was the whole thing. Ooh, that, was good. After that. that was good for a hat, but uh, uh -huh. countering with you. Who, who followed that couple? As a, uh, that ran the farm? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we don't like to be one upmanship here. I just know that because it was my grandparents that ran it. All right, listen, you tell the folks at ETV that we're trying to do as good a job as they did with all that foundation money behind it. That's it. That? All right. Thanks a lot for calling. Okay. Bye bye. Okay, we got another one? Yeah, we're going. Hi, you're on the air. Yeah, can I talk to Herb to jump? The chump is right here. <laughs> hey, Herb, you chump. <laughs> yes, go ahead. Hey, well, what's the question got to be about? Williston? Williston. This I don't have like, any real good questions. Here's a wise kid. Think about the landfill on Williston. It's, well, it should be well lined. We know that. <laughs> <laughs> all right. They'll watch from all over this county. You know, yeah. they start flipping the dial. And by the way, you folks that are going to start to tune into the news, forget about it. Marcellus. You don't need them. Hey, we can tell you the <laughs> troops landed safely in Somalia. That's all set for the news. Yeah. The weather, cold, folks. <laughs> and the eclipse, the eclipse has started. Full lunar eclipse this evening and sports. And I know you're going to be upset, Howard. After all their trades, those Red Sox are still <laughs> lousy. <laughs> and you want to talk with Howard about sports? This gentleman went down to the fantasy camp last winter. Not me. Herb. No, no. Herb did. <laughs> And hit pretty darn well. In fact, I want you to divulge to the, list, to the viewers here, Herb. How did you do down there? Went four for 11. Four for 11, that's good hitting in anybody's league. And you hit off the likes of what pitchers? Well, Bill, uh, Bob Stanley, that's enough. Bigfoot, <laughs> indeed. Just two years out of the bigs himself. Right. And you were there standing against that mighty fastball. Showing no fear at all. No. No wonder you came on this show. After <laughs> right. being shell shocked like that, you can put up with anything. Yeah, right. I'm going to line two. Hello, you're on the air. Yeah, I'm your back to start Howard, the chump. Yeah. What are you going to ask him? Where, where did, how did Williston get its name? Good question. He'll tell you. Hold on. Well, uh, Williston used to, a lot of people don't know this, used to be Burlington. 
And a fellow by the name of Willis is the one that uh, founded uh, Willison. And they sw uh, somehow they swapped. I don't know how why they did, but they did swap. They named Burlington and Willison took Willison. That's how it's got its name. Howard, in, in a minute, you told them all that they, more than they could get from that half hour thing on ETV. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yes, sir. Right. <laughs> what a lesson for those kids out there. I hope every school teacher in the state gets wind of this program and can use this as a they, teaching they, they aid. They gain a lot with it. Yes, sir. <laughs> Hi, you're on the air. Uh, yes, I have a question. Uh, what was the name of the Williston Post Office, which was up in the Oak Hill Road area? You hold on, sir. We'll tell you. Jack Bradish. What was Jack that? Bradish ran that one. Yep. Jack Bradish. Is that no, correct? it was called the Talcott Post Office. The Talcott. Never. Up in the Oak Hill area. Never knew of one up there. No. Up on the hill. There were more than uh, there was more than one post office running at the same time in the town. Well, ask him where it was. Up this there. was way back. Way back. Well, hey, we're not going to argue with you if you say that that hey, the mail must go through. That's all I know. <laughs> That's good for a hat, my friend. You got anything hey. else to stop them? Because I got one for you. Well, we've got uh, we've got one here. We need an answer to. We'll give it to you. Who was who was murdered and put in a well? Ah, uh, we know that I one. I know that one. Howard, go ahead. It was uh, Blair. Now, he what got was murdered this? in 1949, and he was he was stuck in the well. He was stabbed 17 times and then shot in the head. Man, <clears throat> were you involved in any I of the investigations a, uh, of that? I was the first officer on the scene. You were there, Howard. You're the first everywhere. We'll get to other <laughs> how, train wreck. We're going to have to talk about the train wreck. Who was the first one at the train wreck that they found in Williston? There, boom. Howard was there <laughs> with the with the Williston fire department. Yes, they sir. were there too. My friend, I have a question <laughs> for you. Okay. Uh, uh, I know, but I want to know from this gentleman, who is Torga Tokel? Torga Tokel, and I'm talking back in the 1960s. And, and I want to know, uh, the people that followed this fellow used to meet for a specific reason. Will it help if I tell you where they met? Are you from Williston in that era? Yes, but uh, I'm not sure whether it's going to help. Well, <laughs> recognize the name Target Togo. Uh, well, maybe one of our other listeners uh, and viewers will be able to answer that one. That's an interesting question. Uh, how about, well, will he know the historical question? I'll ask him. Who donated the land for the Chittenden Monument that's in the West Cemetery of Williston Village? Now, that's a historical question going way back. Who donated the land? I don't know, the Lafays? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a good that would be a good answer for Winooski. I would have said Villamare. <laughs> Winooski, you know. And the chances would be you know pretty good you're gonna hit it. In this town you gotta say uh, Chittenden or you gotta say uh, what else can you say for a popular name? Talk They're running on the bottom of the screen once in a while, you'll see them. Sir, we appreciate your call. Okay, thanks. All right. Hi, you. you're on the air. Hi. Yes. Good evening. Uh, this Barbara Dudley, and I lived in Wilson for a long time. Okay, Barbara. Uh, what I want to ask them is they remember who was the postmistress there, right there across from, uh, I guess it's the uh, convenience store now, uh, uh, and the post office used to be right there. Who was the name of the postmistress that was? Sylvia, Sylvia Warren. Warren. Sylvia Warren. See? you got to get up early to stump these guys, oh, man. Oh, you're right. And now I'm going to ask for a replacement. Our technical screw, uh, crew there, it's, don't be upset, folks. Hey, this isn't slick, Bill, but we do give you the information. I'm going to go to line one. Is that going to be all right? Hello, you're on the air. Okay, i got a question for you. Yes. Uh, back in the 40s, uh, there was a popular place where everybody went to dance. Yes, sir, I know that one. You know that one? Yep. What was it? Well, what, was the name of the, what was the name of the place? It was Hart's Barn. That's it. Now, hold on, sir. Okay. Got a question. Who was the fellow that ended the barn dances at Hart's Barn? And what was one of the very popular groups that played at Hart's Barn? <laughs> I have to think on that one. Wait. I'll give you a clue. I, what? You won't have to go far to find the guy. <laughs> <laughs> right here. <laughs> can you magazine that? I can. I got one more question. All right. The Ice House. Yes, sir. Where was that located and who owned it? North Wilson. 
North right, Williston, right, wrong. and uh, Mr. Wright owned it. Mr. Wright owned it. Whereabouts in North Williston? Across the railroad track on the north side of the railroad track, North Williston. That's it. There you go. There you go. Thank you. Thanks for calling. <laughs> <laughs> And by the way, anybody know who they uh, played out there, those barn dances? We want to hear barn dance stories. I bet you there are tons of them, the fights and the goings on. Uh, hello, you're on the air. Hi, you're on the air. I thought you were. <laughs> oh, I, I messed it. I messed it up that time. Hello, you're on the air. Yeah, I got a question. Yeah. Um, what's the store down in Wilson where the, all the young kids used to go to buy their beers back in the 1950s? This fellow, you were one of them too, weren't you? Yes, I was. Boy, this guy came from Western Williston, I can tell you. You got it. Where was that store? Uh, was, that, was that Romeo Hools? You got it. No, you got it. <laughs> oh, yeah, I used to buy all my 40 ounce bottles back down there. Now, I got a question for you, sir. Okay. Way back now, this is a historical situation, it's true. Do you know what the on, who the only people were that could buy liquor in the town of Williston? Oh, I think you stumped me on that one. Well, the answer, and this is the truth, that you could only buy liquor if you had a prescription from the doctor. Really? Yes, sir. Only I was liquor. not aware of that. See what you learn? No, oh, we gotta learn something every day, I guess. Well, you also got a hat, so keep this under your hat. How's that? <laughs> okay. Thanks for calling. Yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. Hi, you're on the air. Yeah, question for either one of the gentlemen. Go ahead. Back when Muddy Brook School was in full swing, okay? What's that school again? Muddy Brook School. Muddy Brook, okay. Okay. Who, were the two, who was the one of the bus drivers that picked up children? And when they built the new Central School in Wollaston, who was the bus driver, one of the bus drivers? The other one, there were two of them. Yeah. They picked up children. Colbert Ivey. Colbert Ivey and Ward Johnson. Yeah. J. Ward Johnson is the name I have for and one of them. And Hobart Ivey. Hobart Ivey. Who's the other one, Sir Howard? Hobart Ivey? No. There's another one? One more man. Well, we got two or three. Is there another so bus got, driver? Bud Johnson was, when they built the new Central School, and Ivey's one. Who's the other one, sir? Hmm. Lived <laughs> off your way, Howard. Don't say, on uh, that way. I should know him. He was on my way. <laughs> you got him. Howard Gover, sir. Yeah, okay. You got him. You know what that means, my friend. I think you're going to get a hat. <laughs> And some banal. I'm telling you the one thing, this will keep the cows warm at night. <laughs> All right? Thank you. Boom. Oh. <laughs> I don't know if we got another one here. Hi, you're on the air. Yes, I had a question for the chumps. Go ahead. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, I wondered if uh, they probably do know how the name came about for Shunpike Road. All right. Why is it called Shunpike Road? I know this one. In fact, uh, this was on an earlier edition of the show. Oh, it was? I believe so. Go ahead. Uh, uh, South Burlington, not from Williston, but go ahead. Okay. Maybe my... I, I live there, but I don't know. Well, the information I had was that in the old days, there was a toll. There was a toll road. This was a stage road, and it was a, you paid a toll to go over it. And people uh, then started to divert their direction and evaded the toll booth. Oh, I see. Therefore, they were shunning the, the toll. Is that correct? I know you know it, but I didn't know I heard it, didn't know it. <laughs> I lived there and I didn't know it. <laughs> Don't worry. They both know a heck of a lot more than I do. I just got lucky. <laughs> and I didn't ask you to call with that one either. <laughs> you know what you got, my friend? You got some lemon drops. Anyway, I got to be careful because they fall all over the place. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Thanks for calling. All right. You know, I hey, we got more calls than there are people in Williston. You're for right. That's great. That's great. And you guys were worried. I was worried to be truthful with you. Oh, now we got some more questions we can uh, throw out. Frankly, I was looking for the name of that band, the most popular band out there at the Square Dances. We haven't got a call yet for it. Not yet. We will. Don't worry. We want to know who took the tickets, who paid the bands, who took care of the details out there at Hart's Barn. Uh, We'll question you more on the barn situation. Mm. Hello, you're on the air. Yes, I got a question for you. I want to know how you did down, two questions actually. I want to know first how you did down to the fancy baseball club, and second of all, I want to know who started Sam's Liquidation Center. Uh huh, there's a little plug for somebody there. <laughs> we'll get the answers for you. Number one, I went uh, four for 11 at the fantasy camp. <clears throat> That's pretty good. Who, uh, there were other Vermonters there. Who from this area accompanied you down there? 
There was uh, there was one from Essex, one from Jericho, two for Hein two from Hinesburg. You even got a baseball card with your picture and statistics on the back there too. Sure have. <laughs> and what uh, Red Sox players were involved with that? Well, there was so many of them I can't even begin. I got pictures of them at home. I can tell you who they are. <laughs> well, you, speaking of pictures, uh, and, well, the other part of his question: Who started Sam's liquidation? Who's the owner? I don't know, but he wants a free plug. Uh, we'll give it to him. John. Taft Farms. It's where the Taft Farms were, and uh, John, he got a plug anyway. John and Bob, there was two of the two okay. owners. Uh, Herb, why don't you bring the picture into the set here and ask uh, questions about it. You lugged it in here. We don't want you to go away without asking a question. And take a look at that, folks. Is, it, that, is that place familiar? Does this ring a familiar bell with anybody in the Williston area? Where is this picture taken? What is this particular location in Williston? Give us a ring here, 862-3966. Don't forget, we still have the Vermont teddy bear to give to the person who we judge to have the best question that you can stuff the chumps with. So let's carefully put that one back, and we'll go to line one. Hi, you're on the air. Yes, I would like to know if you could remember who was one of the very famous teachers there in the eighth, uh, 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 one through eighth grade uh, teachers at that time? Good question, ma'am. Hold on, because what here's something. Uh, she wants to know one of the famous teachers at, at the uh, school that went one that, to eight. Yes, that, that, that uh, prompted me to go through high school. Good. We want to hear about that. And I, I want to tell for the people who have recently come into the state, we call them sun tanners or whatever. A lot of these people have trouble remembering all the teachers because they've transferred schools so many times. Well, but I will venture to say, ma'am, that people of your generation, I know of mine, can, if they stayed in one school, can remember every teacher they ever had. They, uh, they uh, leave such a, you know, a, a strong embedded memory with you. Uh -huh. And so... Uh, Was it Virginia Salters? No. Nope. Well... Go ahead. There's some other teachers in that system that may have influenced this lady. Yeah, but, but what year is she talking about? Give us a year, man. Uh, I would say, uh, oh my golly, uh, way back in uh, 19, um, let me see, 34, 35. Okay, this of course was for your granddaughter, right? Or was uh, it the only one that I can remember is Marion Higley. Oh God, Howard, you're too smart. <laughs> Way to go, Howard. You got her. She thought for sure you were going to get uh, stuck. It was Mrs. <laughs> Mrs. Sullivan was uh, another one I had. And, uh, uh, she, she was Mrs. Uh, Dot Bingham's wife. She, Mrs. Uh, Higley, by the way, still Higley her. was, yep. Now she's told her age. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That was a good try, man. Thank you. And call back if you got another one for him, all right? I think I might. Thank you. Bye. Bye bye. See, I wanted to hear. Hi, you're on the air. Yeah, I have a question and an answer. Go ahead. Well, I have an answer to the uh, farm thing. Yes. That was a farm in Williston, on the old farm hill. On old? No, wait, it was over near no North Lake. No, no. Ramp Lake. No. No? All right, well, that's wrong. Good try, though. Well, here's my question. Yeah? Who's leading the AFC East right now? In football? Mm -hmm. NFL? AFC East is headed by Buffalo. Wrong. What the heck? You know, I'm <laughs> All right. <laughs> Auditorium. Oh, hey, I'm answering the phone like I'm at work. Hi, <laughs> oh, you're on the air. Yeah, I'd like to ask the gentleman, uh, where was the old Kirby's Corner store located? Living there now. Yeah, it's Warner Phelps. It's it's where Warner Phelps' house is. Yep. yep. There. Uh, anything else, my friend? No, nope, that's it. All right, thank you for calling. Hi, you're on the air. Yeah, hi, I have a question. Uh, I was wondering if you guys know who the librarian was before Rick Emerson. We'll tell you that. Before, come on, Howard, don't let us down here. This is the southern and western part of Williston guy. This is the guy that got the beer from that store in the 50s. I can remember. Yeah, it's the same guy. At least he went to the library. <laughs> Any the library idea? Who was a librarian? She lived in uh, Richmond or Jonesville. Well... Uh. Why? Tell them any name that comes into mind, and we'll try it. Oh, I know who it is. I know you do. Huh? But I, uh, Mrs. Peachum. No, uh, oh. Laddie Lane. Lane. Right. 
He moved You out. got a half of me already, didn't you? No. You got one now. All right. There you go. Bye now. Thanks for calling. He moved out of the state. Hi, you're on the air. Yeah, just uh, give me an answer on the uh, farm one. Is that the Fontaine Farm in Wilson? No, it wasn't. No. no. Good guess, my friend. Okay. Thanks, Thanks for calling. Yeah, good night. Goodbye. Well, that's good. I'm guessing. That's uh, they think they know, but uh, you that's are sneaky on that, Herb. <laughs> yeah. Hi, you're on the air. Yes, uh, this is a question for the moderator. Uh, what do you think? What picture do you think Herb would bring? Uh, he'd bring a picture of what farm? His own. Yes. <laughs> is it? That's what I would guess. It is. We think along the same channels. It's Channel 17. We're thinking. <laughs> <laughs> we got it. You know what we get for that? We got to get rid of it. You know, uh, uh, this this is a beautiful thing. Understanding urinary incontinence. <laughs> There's a tape. I'm not Thank old goodness. enough for that yet. <laughs> <laughs> but that was a good answer, my friend. How about something that can stump either of these gentlemen? Any question at all? Oh, don't have. Oh yes. How about naming the what was it six? I think schools there used to be in Wilston. Six schools. Or was there more? Six or seven? Well, that's tough enough to name six schools and where they were in Williston. Can you do that, fellas? I can name some. <laughs> Go ahead, Howard. One is a, was a North Olson school. One was a Lampson school. One was a Stoke Pike Corner school. One was at the village. One at uh, Oak Hill school. One at West Oak Hill. One at... Uh, Muddy Brook. Uh, Muddy Brook. And one, we, what would we be talking about down there? Sucker Hollow. And these toes probably got thrown out of all of them for crying out loud. <laughs> How's that? That's pretty good, huh? Where's Sucker Hollow? That's, <laughs> that's a good question. That's, that's in the uh, off in uh, Route 2A. That is, that is 2A South. Yeah. That's but, a lot of schools. In there, there's one, one more school I forgot. There used to be one next to where I live on uh, Old Stage Road. There, so, actually, there actually was a school that one time. How'd they do, my friend? Pretty good? Pretty good. All right. Uh, I've got another question. Who was the per first person, uh, I think, to get to the uh, fire when the uh, Red Schoolhouse burned down? If it wasn't Lunderville, I don't know who it would be. <laughs> He's everywhere, that guy. <laughs> Were you there? Were you the first one there? Huh? No, I wasn't. Oh, will be there, kind. I was, there wasn't a fire department then. Well. That was uh, Essex Junction Fire Department actually was the first in Richmond came in to help. I think it was Jack Bradish and Harold Azeltine. I, it probably was. I wouldn't bet against it. <laughs> I wasn't uh, in the fire. We didn't have a fire department then. Do, hey, let me ask you, caller. How does Howard do as uh, the chief of the volunteer fire department in Williston? Well, I think he does pretty darn well. Well, and uh, he had that honor of uh, uh, receiving uh, the dog from President Bush. Do, would you happen to know who the other president was that visited Williston or who the famous general was? Those are historical questions. I better answer that one. Uh, people will be wondering. In 1817, James Monroe came to the town of Williston. And in 1825, General Lafayette made an appearance in Williston. In fact, there's a story in one of the old history books that uh, coming running out of the Eagle Hall, I guess it was a, a tavern, the Eagle Hall Tavern, mm -hmm. the manager said, get out of here. And, he says, get out of the way here. Here comes the general. And the fellow said, sir, I am the general. He ran <laughs> right over. So where did Lafayette sleep? Uh, in that, bed. Uh, <laughs> some other, t <laughs> some inn there. Uh, what was an inn there, there in Williston? There was one at Morrow's house, and there was one at the uh, Germain place, right across from Tom and Tim there was one there. How about that? Would it be one of those places, my friend? Well, we don't know, but that's a good guess. <laughs> My friend, thank you very much for calling. All right. Hi, you're on the air. Hi, I'm the farm pitcher. Yes. It's Herbie Goodrich's farm. It used to be the Hart Barn Dance. Hart Barn Dances. Who used to perform at the Hart Barn Dances? Uh, Roy Gobert. He was a caller, but who was He was, was a caller. What band? Well, I don't know. I don't remember the name. Um... And did, did you hear that bit on the tape there where it said there was an open-air movie theater in Williston? Where was that exactly, fellas? <laughs> you and nobody's called in? Nobody, Nobody knows. knows that. Would you, were you ever aware of that? Did you ever hear about that, caller? No, I didn't. An open-air theater just operated during the summer. Tell me, tell me. Yeah. Uh, you better tell them, Howard. It was down back of the, where the Catholic Church is now by Ellen Brook. It was an open-air theater, and they used to perform there quite often. 
Not that I ever thought, but, but way back, like way in back. the twenties and the teens and yeah, the twenties, probably. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's really something. Before they had the drive-in movies with the cars, <laughs> yeah. the open-air theater <laughs> in the town of Willis. <laughs> There's something. My friend, thank you for calling. We appreciate it. Hey. Uh. Hi, you're on the air. Yes, I got a question for Herbie. Right. I'd like to know what type of blowtorch was used to cut his hair and how much he paid for it. <laughs> well, he's referring to it. Did you see the before and the after? Wasn't that something yesterday? My goodness. It looked like my thing. It looked like it had to be sculptured. <laughs> but my good friend Walter Wood at Metropolitan Hair took care of things. He's an excellent hairdresser, <laughs> and I recommend him highly. Really? Did Howard have to sit on Herbie to hold him down? Or? <laughs> well, you really know how to hurt a guy, don't you? Uh, have you got a question that can stump these fellas? Um, I'm trying to think of the old Catholic church. What was that before it was the church? Horse barn. A horse barn. How's that? Oh, well, they stumped me. Now, wait a minute. I also want to know, there are a lot of churches in Williston. And way back, there was a spiritualist movement. Now, do you know anything about that, any of you, my caller or my panel? What about the spiritualists? Uh, did they have conventions and seances and stuff? I know they did in the Burlington area down in uh, Queen City Park area of town. Not to my knowledge. Well, there was a spiritualist society. Oh, there may be, but I, there was. I yeah, never knew way that. back. Nothing I heard of. <laughs> uh, let's see. I have another question. In 1859, there was a very unusual clock that was built by a gentleman in Williston. I want to know who built that clock and what made it so unusual. Did you ever hear that story? No, never did. All right, maybe somebody, I'll let that hang for a little while, and then we'll give out the answer, because we want to beat ETV at their very game. They think they can give all the smart answer stuff to these, you know, sticky questions. No, sir, we've got information they never even heard of. We thank you for calling, sir. Thank you. You know the voices now, huh, fellas? Yeah. Hi, you're on the air. Hi, I got a question about the picture earlier. Yeah? Uh, who used to live across the street in the yellow house? It used to be a brown house. And you used to have to help them all the time because the cows would break through the fence and go all over the road. Now, could you turn down your uh, the sound on your TV a little bit? There. Now, did you get his question, Herb? Not all of it, no. Who used to live across the street in the yellow house? It used to be a brown house, and you used to help them all the time because the cows would break through the fences, and you'd have to go around them up. Sounds like, it's your, sounds like it's your father. It's a relative of yours, isn't it? Yeah. Give a name. Who was one of your neighbors you had around up the... There was only one neighbor in there, and I... Uh... There was no yellow house there, I don't know. The, the house across the street, there's three now. There used to be only two. The, the yellow one and the... Yeah, the bull in there. You got to be Fonda. Hey, help him out, Howard. No, it's it's before Fonda. Before Fonda. Yeah, well, it's. What years are we talking? Uh, so, uh, seventy-five to eighty. That'd be uh, the other guy there, I know. No, his wife's name was Leslie. Oh, the wife's name was Leslie. Is that correct? <laughs> <laughs> See, who, what was his name? Uh, uh, Herb, you know. I cannot think of his name. I just met him about three days ago again. I hadn't seen him for quite a while. What was the last name, sir? Benoit. Benoit. Okay. All right. You know what you got? Stump the chump hat. There you go. All right. Thanks a lot. All right. Anybody that wins a prize here, our studio is located on the corner of Archibald and uh, North Winooski Avenue, right above Nooney's on the corner there. So come on in and pick up your hats. Wouldn't it be nice if you could have a parade of everybody that won a hat in Williston <laughs> next 4th of July? Right with that, yeah. Probably stating, I participated in Stump the Chumps. <laughs> yeah. I don't know why, but, you know. Hi, you're on the air. Yes, uh, I'm enjoying your program. Well, thank you, ma'am. I have a question for the um, Chumps. Yes, go ahead. I would like to know, uh, and I have an answer, I believe. Was it the Marsh Grands Band? That's one of them. Mm -hmm. And also, I would like to know, the Bicentennial Tug of War and some of their names. Wow. The Bicentennial Tug of War winner. You know what that sounds to me like? Somebody is vying for this little baby right here. That's a good question. I was on that team. You? <laughs> I no, up. not such a good question. <laughs> no fair. Was Herb on that team? Yes, he was. What, did you have a name on that team? And can you remember who participated with you? Well, there was... Uh, uh, 
Phyllis Gentis. Is that right, uh, Dan? Yes. Roderick uh, Boutin. Yes. Oh, Bob Stratton. Yes. I think Jack Mahan was on that team. Yes, he was the end man. Yeah, he was the end man. He was a good man for that. <laughs> hey, were you a referee in that, Howard? You no, were no. You're, you're at every event. I was doing the police work. I was police doing work that. on yeah. that one. Okay. Yeah. Well, was he a pretty I, good man? Did he miss a couple or what? Yeah, he missed a few. But there were a couple of teenagers that weren't able to participate in the uh, drinking of the prizes. Oh, I see. The prize was some uh, alcoholic beverages? That's curb. Well, I'm asking him. Was this what was the prize? How I heard. Prize was if you got pulled pushed up, pulled across the line, you got the fire hose. That, yeah. But <laughs> well, what were the winning teams' prizes? That went to Violas Gentis, and I don't know what I ever did become of that. Maybe it's still in the bottle. It probably is still in the bottle. It's a good thing. Never could get them all together. That, I understand it. Too. That that stuff makes banal seem calm. <laughs> <laughs> and I was shrinking all the time in the bottle. <laughs> Ma'am, are you having fun with us tonight? Sure. Is she into them bottles? Dangerous. Well, we appreciate you calling. And uh, there were jugs of rum. Jugs of rum. Did wow. You, what did, she get? did she get one of them? Did you get one of them also, ma'am? I'm holding both of them. Holy <laughs> I'd say this is a good evening on the lunar eclipse night. Imbibe a little bit. I think I'm going to speak oh. <laughs> you know, After a couple of swallows of that stuff, you'll see the moon even though it's not there. <laughs> yeah, right. And, we, and they also, yes, extension it at that time. Yeah. Wait, we did. So that's the second joke. <laughs> All right. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you for calling me. Yeah, yeah, right. Right. All right. Uh, well, for the first time, our lines are open, folks. I want you to try to stump Howard and Herb. It won't be that easy because they know their stuff. <laughs> I'm still looking for the, I want to know the band. I remember seeing the little ads in the free press of the band that was most often at Hart's Bind Dances on Saturday night. He died just a few years ago. Yep. And I, why don't you tell a story, Howard? Uh, no, no, it was Herb. You got the, uh, a call from the neighbors across the road when you decided that was it for the Bind Dances. No, uh, Who was it from? Above. Carm Carmelite nuns. What'd they have to say? Well, they wanted to thank me for stopping the dances because uh, there was too many of these young girls that had gone wrong down there. <laughs> boy, oh boy. That was bad. <laughs> Hi, you're on the air. Oh, I got the wrong one, but well, go ahead. You're on. Hello. Uh, was that uh, Goodrow with the band? Goodrow? Yeah. Was the band that played? That's not the one yeah. I'm thinking of. No. No? no? I think you're thinking of Goody Goodrow. Goody Goodrow, yeah. No, uh, he wouldn't be at these barn dances. <laughs> no. Uh, okay. Well, uh, how about another one to stump the panel? Got a question for him? Did they ever solve the first one about where the uh, the picture of uh, the uh, armory? No. I, Nobody's answered. Nobody it. answered it yet, sir. Go ahead with it. Uh, I think that was at the old grocery store there. Uh, um, no, Howard. No, no. <laughs> Not a grocery. These were public buildings. No. Right? Yeah. yeah, right. How about that bridge there? You know any stories about that bridge? No, I just remember that was, there was a grocery store. That, oh, it, that was uh, Wood at the grocery store, wasn't it, Howard? No. no that was uh, the one that built it was uh, Evelyn Parker and her husband and uh, yeah, okay. Ralph, uh, Stigles. Ralph Stigles and his wife. Mm -hmm. They built that and started it. And Sir, do you remember that the uh, the grocery store that we showed the, in the film? Uh, Herb indicates to me that there were six other owners of that particular grocery store. Can you name them? Oh boy! No, I can't order that. <laughs> well, you think about it and give us a call back. All right. And it was a Shell station that was in there somewhere. Yeah, that's, that's right. Phil who, who owned that one? I, I came one. from Massachusetts. Yeah, he moved up in Vermont here. And then I thought uh, it, was an, it was only a one bay service station. That's right. And uh, then Champlain uh, Transmission took it over. Uh -huh. I think he's out of there now. I don't know who's in there now. I, Nobody. <laughs> there isn't any there now. The, sir, I, I don't know if anybody really answered that. Alling Industries. What, what did they make? What was their oh, product? They made screws, little screws. All kinds of screws. Right, but one particular type for one particular reason, one purpose. 
I remember this. Remember that? Oh. Still in almost every house in the United States, probably. Still. Pardon? For, for picture frames. Well, that might be, but that's not the item I'm thinking of. And I, okay, well, well. They made these things. Too. They made coasters, too, I think, yeah? Yeah. All right, sir. Well, thank you for hey, calling. We appreciate I, it. Hi, you're on the air. Did you get the answer to the Torgel talk? No, sir, we did not. Ski racer and ski jumper. From? Probably Finland or someplace like that. He was from Norway. He was a Norwegian skiing gold medalist. That's right. And uh, where did uh, his followers meet on a weekly basis? Do you know? This is from 1962 until 1970. Well, I'd go watch him jump on the behind the landfill at the, uh, the jump. He'd go back there and practice. Isn't that something? A, a gold medalist right there in Williston. See? <laughs> Channel 33, you never knew that. <laughs> and my understanding is that he met with his followers on the Tuthills property on a weekly basis, and that evolved into the uh, Bill Koch Youth Ski Program. Yeah, it, there was a, a Toro Taco Ski Program as well somewhere else around the state. Mm hmm Okay. Uh, I got another question for you. I don't know how you'll be able to answer this. This goes back a long time. This gentleman was the first one to use a specific process in wire, right, in the wire in industry, and it was called cast and placed construction. He was the only one to use this. He was the first one in North and Central America. He was from Williston, and this process uh, was used to build two specific sites. One in the United States and one in Central America. I mean, this is something to claim to fame, fellas, for Williston. Uh, would you know who the gentleman was and what? Oh, Brooklyn Bridge. Well, not a bad guess. It's actually used in cable cars in San Francisco, and it was used in building of the Panama Canal. And the gentleman's name was Henry Root. So you people in Williston have a lot to be proud of. There's a gentleman of... Uh, you know, great uh, influence and uh, was the first to do this. There. All right, sir. Thank you very much for calling. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. Hi, you're on the air. Hi. Um, I know I can't stump those chumps, but I'd like to submit an answer um, to the barn dance question. Yes, ma'am. Is it Don Fields and his pony boys? Absolutely right. You get banal, you get lemon drops, you get a coaster. <laughs> And you're in line for the teddy bear, for all I know. I don't know. <laughs> you can stump these guys. Go ahead. Ch shoot at them here. Oh, boy. <laughs> I don't think so. No, I think they're proving a little too smart for me. Well, no, no. Well, let me ask you. Did you, in fact, ever attend the barn dances? No, but I always wanted to. Really? Yes, I always wanted to do it. I just never got there. I'll be darned. I understand a lot of stories came out of those finances. <laughs> a lot of stories. You really heard something. And, <laughs> and, you know, that place, the Carmelite Night, the uh, nun's place there, that was, that monastery, whatever, that was surrounded by a big stone wall. How did the heck they ever know what was going on? Town <laughs> travel. Oh. <laughs> we'll leave that one alone, man. Thank you very much for calling, though. We appreciate it. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Hi, you're on the air. No one's on this line. Oh, no one is there. Well, we're off it then. Okay, some more questions. Here's a good, here's a good question. Now, Go ahead. How many uh, airplane crashes were there in Williston, and how many people died in those crashes? Excellent question. Airplane crashes in Williston, and how many people died? And who was the first person on the scene? Don't even try it. It was Howard. He was there again. Every accident, every occasion, Howard is there. You ever, have you ever beaten them to the scene of any particular? Never. Never. Can't Never. No, I wouldn't say. <laughs> All right. I'm going to go to, uh, do I have one on line two? I'm going to try. Hi, you're on the air. Yeah. I um, was wondering if somebody there, Herbie or um, Howard, mm -hmm. or yourself would know who built the first houses in uh, Oneida Acres. Huh? Who bought it? Who built, who built them, man? Yes. Who built the houses? Did, Cr did Critchell build but Bud O'Brien. No, not on Need Acres. We're going to go oh, with Twitchells. 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 No. Oh, darn it. We lost. How can we and not get... Acres? Oneida, yeah. That's... Who was it, Howard? You... I said Dick Critchells. He built quite a few over in there. No, we don't know. It was Frank Mercier. 
praying mercy. Or That's related to Dick Turchill, yeah. Howard, <laughs> oh, you're closer to it. Throw her out a hat. She certainly won it, fair and square. <laughs> yeah. You did a good job, man. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right. You did a good job. Thank you. You know, I'm waiting for the fellow. He calls us every month. He's a fellow in Essex. Well, we're waiting for him. <laughs> he hasn't this, called this, yet? No, he hasn't. I'd know the voice. I would know. He's a prize winner of... Well, maybe uh, he's on now. He could be. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> you never know with this fellow. Hi, you're on the air. Hello. Hello. Yes. Who we'll picked up the mail from the train in North Williston and brought it to the village? That yeah. That's that handsome guy on the end. The handsome one <laughs> over there, Howard. The single man? I, I know one person that used to. I don't know if this is the one. Ethan Porter used to do it. Ethan Porter. Wrong. Porter. He, <laughs> he's, he's not very smart, is he? <laughs> no. oh, well, he's smarter than me, I'll tell you that, so I'm going to leave that alone. <laughs> Throw out another name, Howard. It could be Clem Austin. Wrong Clem again. Wrong again. One more chance. <laughs> is it, was that, uh, that was a long time ago. I what? Give us a year, ma'am. 1940. 1940. Right at the beginning of the war. Yeah. No, the only the other one is it would be uh, possibly uh, Guy Lampson. Guy Lampson. No, sir. Oh, for Bob three, Albert. we struck out. Would have been Bob Alberts. Could be Bob Alberts. Nope. Mm. Give it. We give up, man. I, I, Who was it? Tim O'Brien. Tim O'Brien. You agree with her? I never knew they did, but I, she said that it's going to be. Gets right. a hat, Howard. <laughs> Can't argue with her. Don't forget, we have the best question tonight gets the Vermont teddy yeah, bear. That was a good question. Thank you very much, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know uh -huh. Hi, you're on the air. Yes, for Howard. Okay. The answer to his airplane crashes. Yes. One over near what's now Moore's Lumber. Yeah. One down on the corner of Griswold Road and Industrial Park Road in the corner behind uh, Burnett's. Uh -huh. That's two. There's two of them. Okay, and on whose land is that when it crashed behind uh, uh, at Griswold Road? Whose land was that? Howard. It was on the uh, uh, Ollie. No, no. Oh, uh, Howard. I'm, was, uh, you'll know this one. I know you do. Whose land did that one crash? Oh, Mr. Robert. That's your correct. He usually is. Okay, guys. No, Where's no, the rest no. of them? Where's the rest Hold of them? Hold on. We want to know some more. Oh, what those other two? I remember those two. We got two. How, give uh, us a total number, Howard. There, there, was four, there was four. Four. Yeah, I knew about the one by Moore's Lumber and on Robert's land. That's two. Now, where'd the other two come? Were they numbers one and four, or where did they come in the order that he well, didn't that get? Was the, the last yeah. two, I think. Uh, the that, last, would, uh, that would be num uh, number two he hasn't. Yeah, it hasn't said in the number, the last one, the other Number four, yes. Okay, so we were looking for the second one and the fourth one. Mm -hmm. And we'll give us a number, my friend. How many do you think were uh, killed in those crashes? Oh, uh, let's see. The one by Moore's Lumber, I think there was one killed and one they yanked out, and I think they were both killed on Robert's land. Is he right, Howard? No. No. But a good guess, my friend. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you for calling. Hi, you're on the air. Yeah, that gentleman about that plane crash. I know one of, I think, on Willis, I mean, on Taft Corners. There was a jet plane, two people were involved. That's the one by Moore's. Yep. That's, a, that's one of them. That, that's, that's one it. of them? That's one of them. But that's not, that's one that he already named. No, oh, they already named that one. We're looking for the second one and the fourth one. Nope, don't, can't help you out that. Well, <laughs> okay. thanks for calling. Yeah, bye. Bye bye. Hi, you're on the air. Hello. Well, I don't know if they are. <laughs> Hi, you're on the air. Hi. Uh, on the, what did you say that Tim O'Brien did? He uh, unloaded the... Uh, he read mail from the depot in North Williston. Oh, you're right. You're, you're quite right on that. Now, for the awning factory, they used to make cup hooks. Absolutely right, man. Cup hooks. That's right. Everybody's... Now, I want to ask Kirby, what did the cloistered nuns, what were their beds made out of? Ooh. Straw. 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 That's right. That's right. Yep. All I right. Used to, I used to finish the good straw. Good question, man. <laughs> okay. Good one. <laughs> right. Thanks for calling. That throw her a hat. I like that question. What were the nuns' beds made out? Yeah, straw. Right. Boy, I gotta keep that one in mind for the. I used to take the straw to them. You used to bring the straw to them. Yeah. 
Uh, Howard had to be involved some way. He's always involved in every story that happens. I couldn't get in there. They no. Had, yeah, they had, a oh. fire, they had a fire up there. I got you in were there, there then. You <laughs> son of a gun, Howard. You're everywhere. <laughs> Hi, you're on the air. Yes, on the plane crashes, there yeah. was one by Morris Lumbers, Commerce Street. There was what? one down by Industrial Avenue, uh, by Jane R's, by the storage place. And there was one uh, just down the road from uh, O'Brien's store. And there was a fifth one, IBM. Land. Yeah, that helicopter. Was a helicopter. 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 And that yeah. didn't crash. They just left it. Uh, I want to know, my friend, you are in uh, line for a top prize here. I want to know how many were killed in all the crashes combined. All the crashes? Four. Absolutely right. Absolutely right. You get Banal. I'll reach the Banal. Howard, you have to throw him a hat. Okay. This stuff, my friend, if they use this uh, instead of the uh, oil in those helicopters, <laughs> they'd never go down. <laughs> those helicopters would be faster than a spaceship. This stuff is all-purpose lotion. Use it for whatever ails you. Give all it to right? Kirby. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. All right. Thank you very much for calling. <laughs> Hi, you're on the air. Hello. How about the slaughterhouse that's in Williston? Could you tell us anything about that? Here's my mother from Burlington that's asking about the slaughterhouse in Williston. <laughs> Which one? Well, see, there's more than one. Name, let's see if you can name the owners of the slaughterhouses in Williston. Who were they? Solomon used to own it. Yes, uh, Solomon, so? that's the guy from Wickman that owns yeah. that one. Uh, Solomon, and who else? Uh, Senna. Senna's. Senna's. All right, so that answers the question, all right? Okay. Thanks. Hi, you're on the air. Yeah, I'd like to know if they can tell me when the wooden bridge, the wooden covered bridge went out in North Williston and when the metal bridge was built. They'll tell you. I think it's 1927 that went out. The what? 1927 was a flood. That's when the wooden one went out. 1927, man. That sound right? No, it's incorrect. <laughs> <laughs> 1923, the wooden bridge went out. Yeah. The metal bridge was built in 1925. Gee, See, you did go through the flood. See the things we learn here? Now, ma'am, I have one for you. Uh-oh. <laughs> this is just a simple true or false. The North Williston Bridge was built because the covered bridge was washed out in the flood of 27. That's incorrect. That, you're right. <laughs> and what caused that bridge to go down? It went out in a storm. The ice in the spring. It was a stump. <laughs> Appropriately for stump to chumps, a stump caused a jam of the ice and everything. Ice jam yeah. though, right? That's true. Yeah. Yep, yeah, it was in 1922, all right? And it washed downstream. And it became part of whose barn? You know that? Uh, no, I don't. Anybody? You tell us know what barn that washed down to? The Redmond. Oh, yeah. The Redmond barn, I guess. Isn't that something? 1922. Man, that great question, though. We appreciate you calling. You, how about a hat for her? We're going to have a parade of people, a Fourth of July. Everybody that want a hat here, going to wear them proudly. Thanks for calling, ma'am. Hi, you're on the air. Hi. Uh, in 1942, where GE is now, Bell Aircraft used to be. Yes. Can either of you gentlemen tell me what they used to build? Bell Aircraft, you're talking in Burlington now, but uh, go ahead. Tell Helic us. Helicopters, weren't they? They, yeah, they, they were related to the war uh, effort of building airplanes, helicopters. No, they did that in Buffalo. Well, darn it, I don't know. What did they do specifically here at Bel Air? Gun turrets. Oh, you're right. I should have known that. Gun cart. You're right. I but, didn't live you know, in Burlington, so I didn't know. And they probably had to bring them out to Williston to guide. <laughs> now, Howard, you had something to do with that, too. I, Howard probably had something to do with the shipment of Bell and parts over there in the Williston. <laughs> Thank you for calling, your friend. I do. All right. I don't know if we got one here. No, not this time. Fellas, how about some more questions? Yeah, uh, here's one. Where are the three blacksmith shops in the uh, town of Williston? There was three of them. Three blacksmith shops, folks. If somebody can get that, I think they might get the teddy bear if they know where the... Yeah. Is that yeah. a hard one, would you say, or I, pretty hard? Well, I would say probably it, uh, it was pretty one? hard. You got a difficult one to throw out there? Yeah, about, you know where Friendly's is? Yes. What used to be there? What used to be where Friendly's is? Uh, let's see. Did we tell them who drove the most people to and from Williston Central School? We answered that one? Yeah. Yep. That was J. Ward Johnson. Uh, we got the skier. Uh, a very simple one, folks. 
where is Depot Hill and why did it get the name Depot Hill? And thinking of names, we got Stovepipe, right? Stovepipe was mentioned. Mm -hmm. Why that name Stovepipe ever come up? These fellows were unaware of that a little bit, some of the history yeah, yeah. of all that. But we want to know what Stovepipe Corners and what that was named for. All right. Uh, any other questions you might have, folks? Come on, join us here. We still have a few minutes. We still haven't got the name of the the owners of the no, Tom and Kim's store. That's that, right. We, there were, you said there were six owners of that six store. Six owners. Come on, folks. Yeah, hey, we got some more. Bear sitting there. We got some more hats. Oh well, yeah, we got. We plenty got some hats. more good stuff there too. Oh, <laughs> boy, you'd be. I, they don't. They don't get prizes like yeah, this. Not like this, right? No. And we haven't got. We haven't got the one who uh, was murdered and got hung either. That's right. We got to know that. Oh yeah. A lot of questions out there, folks. We want to be able to tell the school children this is a program where you'll learn your history. And the two creameries. Two creameries. It was in Williston. Oh, there we, we go. All. We got one. Hi, you're on the air. Hi. I want to ask Herbie, who drove the uh, bus to deliver the kids at the old Red School House down here? On, uh, just up from O'Brien's store. That had to be a private car, and I'm not sure who drove that. It was an old panel truck. Panel truck? Yeah. That's older than I am. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know. You stumped us, man. I think it was Mr. Gover. Would you? Could be. Could be, could yeah. be Gover. Throw her a hat. Okay. <laughs> Wear it proudly, man. Yeah, don't get it dirty. Keep it clean. That hat needs to be kept clean. <laughs> okay, bye. Thanks for calling. <laughs> Hi, you're on the air. Hi. Yes. Back in 19, between 1945 and 1949, Herb was in a show. What was the name of the show? It was a minstrel show. You're right. Yeah. Name a couple people that were in it. Ray Fontaine. Uh-huh. Uh, Your father was in it. My father was in it. Mm-hmm. I was in it. Uh, yeah, you were in it. Did it have a title to the show? No, it was a minstrel Just show. A, That's yeah. what I wanted to know. Well, where was it held? It was in the Grange Hall, yeah. which now is the town hall. You're right. And was Howard taking tickets? He used you yeah, everywhere. Yeah, yeah, I was there. <laughs> I was too young to remember. <laughs> and I was we, there. Played, we played one night over at St. Michael's College. Yes, yep. we did. Yep. There I was, was in it too. There was a La France that was in it. Uh-huh. Harvey yeah. Lemire. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mike Posey. Right. Yeah. Was the head one of it, I think, yeah. that started yeah. it. <laughs> yep. Ma'am, how about those hearts bind dances? Were you ever there? I sure was. I want to hear some stories. <laughs> I wouldn't want to hear them. <laughs> well, yeah, this is a family show, man. It's a lot of fun. Family show. You're right. But uh, the two step. And there, there was never any fighting going on. Not allowed, right? Yeah. No fighting, no drinking. <laughs> no, no, no. Howard probably took the ticket. Yeah. He did. <laughs> right. he, he paid off the bands. He did everything. He had charge of the police and everything. He was charged of everything. Howard right, he was. Yeah. Who, who took care of the concession stand? Oh, God. That's a good question. That's a good one. What did me? You better tell her, huh? <laughs> it was tell Mr. Her. Katie Hart. Yep. Okay. All yeah. right. <laughs> Thanks for calling, man. All righty. She got a hat? She's all right. There, keep it clean. <laughs> uh oh, I press conference. I said I would never do it, and I press conference. Unpress it. unpress it. How do you unpress it and go there? Hi, you're on the. Oh, hi, you're on the air. Yeah, I think uh, Herb was asking about what used to be where Friendly's is. Wasn't there a creamy stand there? No. Where was the creamy stand? Down by Moore, where Moore's is. Oh yeah, that's right to her. Who yeah. owned it? Probably Herb. <laughs> Tatro. Okay. Yeah. Tatro's creamy skin. Yeah, Mr. Tatro. All right. Yeah. Well, you guys are sharp. Okay. Yeah, a long night if I weren't here. I'm a little, just alone, man. Hi, you're on the air. No, no. No? We'll go to one. Hi, you're on the air. Hi, you're on the air. Oops. You were on. I'm sorry. You'll have to call back. Inefficient as I am. Al Wheel will never let me hear the end of it. He doesn't let me get near the phone. He says I mess it up all the time. He's right. Hi, you're on the air. Yeah, who drove the bus to North Wilson School? The North Williston School? Big Bowl's Mountain View Road, that school on Mountain View Road, and, they, and they were, kids were bus to North Wilson. Who was the driver? What year are we talking? Oh, like 45. 45. Oh, baby. Yeah, it would have to be home. Oh, baby. No, no, it was way before that. When they closed down view, when the Lampton School, when they closed that for one year, they trucked them to North Wilson. It was a private Gla uh, band. Gladys Laro got, uh... Yeah. Gladys Laro, see? 
Yeah, now these guys would be good at any quiz show on, uh, on NBC or ABC, you know that? You're right. Now, I want you to tell all your friends that you saw a terrific show on Channel 17, and we need their support, and keep listening. The heck with the news, you know? The heck with the sports, the, the Red Sox are lousy, the Yankees are lousy, and it's cold out there. That's all you have to know about the weather and news. Thanks for calling, my friend. Hi, you're on the air. Now, don't cut me off. This uh, oh, I, I wouldn't dare. I wouldn't dare. <laughs> I want to ask Howard, who were the other two policemen that worked with you at Hearts Barn? There was uh, Gene Hanson and Preston Charlin. What about Tim O'Brien? No, Jim O'Brien didn't work. Uh, not not Tim, Jim. Tim, 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 Tim. Oh, Tim O'Brien Tim worked O'Brien a, a short time. He did, yes. Okay, all right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and Howard's father. Yeah. yeah. You guys are doing good. Thank cool. you. <laughs> Thank you for calling me. It's only because the questioners, are, and they're good out there. I yeah. bet you know some voices. And, uh, oh, I recognize you quite Over the next few days, you'll be hearing from them, too, you know. <laughs> and they'll be, and, and take note, if we do never do another show here, we'll have a new set of questions because they'll have a lot that they can stump yeah. you with, and they'll say, ah, we didn't want to call up, yeah. you know, and all that stuff. But we'll go to the line. Hi, you're on the air. Hello. Yes. How are you doing? Multa Benny. You got two good members there. Oh, they know their stuff. They're sharp. Yeah, they're uh, two good Lions member. Yes, sir. Lions Club member. That's right. Uh, what was the uh, plane that came down in the cornfield? What was the name of the two guys? Two guys came down in a plane? Cornfield, up and uh, right off the airport. What was the year? Oh, God, now this has been... Uh, now, was this planned? 20, 20, 20, 25 years, 20 years ago. Now, are we talking this was an accident, or did they do this on purpose, or what? No, no, they just, uh, the thing caught on fire, and they, and they, rather than landing to the airport, they went right in the cornfield. That's right off the airport. Come on, Howard, you must have been the first one on the scene. That, the, the only one that it I know of. by Moors. That, by Moors? By Moors, and uh, there were two uh, National Guard people. That yeah, were right. Playing. Okay, we got it. Uh, who was the two guys? Uh, I don't, I can't recall the names, but I know there were two National Guard people, right. and the, the reason they d did what they did, if they didn't, they landed in Lamplight Acres. Oh, I and see. And uh, they want, didn't want to go into a development, so they... You hit the open they, field. That's right. Oh, good. That was an F-89 Scorpion. Yeah. I think that's what it was. Yeah. You're pretty good, aren't they? <laughs> I'm talking to her. Yeah, yeah no. right. His name was? Go ahead. Who was it? A uh, fellow by the name of Aldrich and uh, Harold. There. What the hell? This is the only show in the world where those names are brought up <laughs> yeah. and reminisced about, mm -hmm. to do with Williston, though. Thank uh, you very much for can, calling. That's hey, great. Can I put a plug in where we're selling some Christmas trees on uh, <laughs> Top Corner? I think Herb knows who he's, he's talking to. Plug yeah. away, my friend. Plug yeah. away. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, sir. The trees are available over there at Top Corner for the Lions Club, right? right. right. Pretty diet. Yep. Beautiful. We know Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for, give my hat, too. Yeah. Put that on top of the tree. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Londonville. Okay. <laughs> Hi, you're on the air. Hello. Hello. Yes. Uh, during the Civil War, where was the post office located where people gathered on the porch to find the casualties of Williston? Residents. Boy, there's an interesting one, my friend. There's a good one. The post office during the Civil War, and it was used to find out uh, what information, sir, about the soldiers? As to what the uh, casualties were for what? Willis and that, soldiers. Any idea, gentlemen? I don't have That's a, a real good question, my friend. What's the answer? Where was that post office? 1864. <laughs> no, Where was it located? We don't know. Uh, Hazel Tynes is next to the uh, store in Williston. I know where Hazel Tynes, but, but I, never, stop, yeah. I never knew there was one there. I didn't know that, man. You know what? What do you think about that question, fellas? I think, I think it's worth the bear. <laughs> yeah. There it is, my friend. That question warrants you the Vermont teddy bear. How's that? <laughs> it's waiting up here at Channel 17 with your name on it. The best question of the night. Hey, Bradish. Yep, Jack oh, Bradish. Jack we know Bradish who, yep. You got it, my friend. Mr. Bradish, with a Williston name like that, you're a sure winner. <laughs> Thank you for participating with us. Yes, sir. <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Bradish is a winner tonight of they're, that. They're clapping in there. All right. Hi, you're on the air. Uh, I, I just wanted to clear something up on the uh, 
National Guard men that got killed, those names weren't correct. What were the names? It was Colonel Guyette. And the other fellow I knew better, I played golf with him, I can't think of his name. Okay, we appreciate... Guyette was one of them. We appreciate the information. Okay. Thank you. All right, we got to go off in 10 seconds. My thanks to my guests, both Herb Goodrich and Howard Lunderville, for their participation. And thank you, folks, for watching. And we'll see you next month for the next edition of Stump the Chumps.